everyone for joining. And again, um, if you have comments or um, questions, please type them into the chat and utilize the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. So with this, I'd like to kick this off and introduce um, our Managing Director of Force for Good, um, our philanthropy, uh, Lisa Morris. Thank you so much. Thanks, Callie. So hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our event. As Callie said, I'm Lisa Morris, Director of Philanthropic Services for the Force Family Office. And we have two missions here today. The first is to give a platform and introduce and hopefully inspire everyone to donate to Equipped for Life, a nonprofit whose program Field of Dreams is meant to build a soccer field for a school in Haiti for orphaned children and to equip that school for the next 10 years. So I am dropping yet again their link to donate in the chat box if you feel so inclined. And our other mission is to talk about the value of sports, uh, the impact that sports can make globally on children, both to their physical health, their mental health, team building, building confidence, and having a platform for professional athletes to be able to really affect social change. So with that being said, it is my true honor and privilege to introduce a personal hero of mine, two-time World Cup winner, two-time Olympic gold medalist, US women's soccer legend, Brandy Chastain. So Brandy, thank you so much for being here. And I would love to let you, pardon the pun, kick things off uh, <laughs> with your own story, just about you know what sports meant in, in your own life and um, the work that you do now and the platform that you have and your experience when you yourself got to go to Haiti. So the floor is yours. Excellent. Well, thank you so very much, Lisa. Thank you to Force Family Office for um, coming together this morning. Thank you to Calvin and the other speakers. You know, I, I have to say that this is very near and dear to my heart, sports, um, community, philanthropy, so this is like right up my alley. I feel like my adrenaline is just rushing up right now. Um, you know, I, I've had a long history and love affair with sports. I, I can remember playing sports way back when I was a really little girl and how much uh, sports really impacted my, my daily life, my daily decisions, uh, the way I felt about myself. And uh, I always thought that I would uh, be a part of sports, you know, just playing sports. It didn't matter what it was, um, only to come to find out that I wasn't going to play in the NFL and be a defensive end. And, you know, um, I realized I wasn't going to be 6'5 and 275 pounds um, and that my course, uh, my life's career would be in something else. But uh, what it did teach me uh, playing sports was. Uh, grit, resiliency, determination, leadership, uh, teamwork. It taught me how to win, lose, fail, get up, um, be a support system, uh, how to uh, grind through tough times, how to uh, find um, friendship and joy, and how ultimately how I could use sports as a platform to make change for other people around me. Um, you know, I have been super fortunate in my life that I grew up in a time and in a place, I'm from Northern California, where, you know, we encouraged kids to be outside and to participate uh, and not just the boys. So I, I was really lucky that I and I had two parents that saw a young girl who was as rambunctious as every other kid in the neighborhood and needed an outlet. And so it just so happened that we signed up for soccer. We had no soccer experience. We, nobody in my family played the game. There was absolutely zero reason for me to get involved except for the fact that it came to my neighborhood and my parents were willing to take a chance. And honest to goodness, Lisa, it was love at first kick and I could not get enough of it. Uh, that didn't stop me from playing other sports, but it really gave me a focus and a place. And to have a place as a young child to find people uh, who like the, thing, the same things you do, who feel the same way about a, a game or um, a physical activity was just, it just opened up all these emotions and all these experiences that um, I now have come to understand as an adult are absolutely essential for young kids to, to have. Uh, 
Um, uh, you said, you know, I've, again, I've, I've had a long career with the national team and it's allowed me to meet some really fabulous people inside and outside of sports, but it also has allowed me to create a, a foundation here where I live in the Bay area called the Bay area women's sports initiative. And I bring that up only as an example of the great things that sports can lead to. And, and the fact that we're talking today about building a field in a country that I have had some experience uh, with in 1991, the U.S. Women's National Team and all the other CONCACAF countries went to the first ever qualification for the World Cup. Now that is it, in Haiti, and that was amazing. It was amazing for so many reasons. Um, obviously, international travel is always something that I advise people to do because as much as you can read or watch about a place, it's going there and, and meeting the people and seeing it live and breathe in real life is just a spectacular experience. And you know, knowing that Haiti at the time was a country in transition and kind of has always seemed to be a country in transition about government and poverty and disruption, uh, it, it, it's such a juxtaposition to the people. The people are unbelievably beautiful, talented, joyful. The, the smiles on their faces are incredible. And they have been dealt some difficult circumstances. And so to see a place for the beauty that it has and to understand um, the sometimes the destitute that kids and people live in just blew my mind. So when you brought this to me, I thought I'm going to speak about how amazing this opportunity is for people who have means and opportunity to make a huge difference. Um, having a field to play on, like our bossy girls here in the Bay Area, we, most of our, um, our participants, it's a girls program from second to fifth grade, are immigrant from immigrant families. Um, they are from um, cultures that don't necessarily encourage young girls to participate. Um, but what we do know is that when girls do participate, a pregnancy rate goes down, graduation rate goes up, we, we, influence on the community increases um, in education, secondary education. It just changes the life and the experience in which they live. And so what's going to happen, and I don't wanna steal any thunder from, from Calvin and, and Equip for Life, it will be transformative. And so um, the, ex the opportunity to play in Haiti, to have people come to the stadium, to see um, you know, crowds cheering and the love of the game, it's in their blood. They love it. They, they come to it. They, they find great joy in it. But then to see on the outside, you know, we went to, um, it was called the City of the Sun. And basically it was a, a community built upon a, a garbage waste. And these are people who are resourceful and they can make great impact and to have an opportunity to run on a field and to have equipment and to see people who care, it, is, it just fills my heart with great joy to know that someone like Calvin and an, and an organization like Equip for Life will be doing amazing change. So um, I know what happens in an, a community that has opportunity but in a community like where they're going even more so that's that's really my story i don't want to take it too much time but sports is a great facilitator for change for positive change excuse me for growing character self-esteem confidence it, everything that i know that i need in life whether that's in business or as i cross the line onto the field i learn through sports and so sports gives back great opportunity. And I just want to thank everyone for being here this morning to you, Lisa, for giving me the opportunity to share my story and to Calvin. I want to say thank you very much for changing what I know will, uh, will be communities that need uh, your support. So thank you. Brandy, thank you so much. You are such an inspiration on and off the field. Uh, the work that you continue to do for girls, for women, uh, using your platform for such good. It's, it's, it's truly inspirational. And I, I, I was practically crying when you were talking. So thank you so much for giving us such a wonderful start to this event and, and such a, a great way for us to introduce
the work that Equip for Life is doing and, and introduce Calvin. So thank you so much for your time today. You are just, you are just an absolute hero. Um, you know, I, I, I said, I'm, I'm 45 years old. And, and for me, when I watched the women's team do what you did, it was like, I felt like, wow, women actually have a place in sports here. Like we're, we're showing the world this. And, and I just think that you are, are just such a wonderful human and thank you so much for your time today. And um, so with that, I would like to actually turn things over and introduce the founder of Equipped for Life, Calvin Belmonte Rue, who's on the call with us today. And um, so Calvin, welcome. I, I do wanna um, remark on the fact that you are still in high school which just blows my mind to know that, you know, you are uh, a high school student who um, is, is really making a difference and is, is connected to the world. You know, I think a lot of parents these days are very worried that, you know, their kids are in front of a screen all day. They're not necessarily connecting uh, in, in a healthy way. Um, and I know sports was really important in your own life and it's a big part of what inspired you to start this. So um, I'd love to just hear from you just for a, a minute or so, just about sports, what, what sports meant to you and how, you know, I know you uh, like Brandy, you're from California. So you um, have certainly had the opportunity to play sports, but just, you know, a little bit about what that meant to you personally, and then we'll get to how you started this organization. Yeah, for sure. And I want to give a huge thank you to Force Wealth and all the panelists and everyone who's here. It really means like a crazy amount to me and for me I mean sports have honestly been most of my life like every single day I would wake up and I'd go to school excited for recess and after school to throw a football and I mean I just you would never see me not playing a sport it was a thing that really like it just felt right to me like every time I played sports I felt so happy and so good and then after <clears throat> I got that feeling um, like after running and I would just feel amazing and like all my problems would be lifted. The other thing is sports have really given me like most of my strongest bonds with friends. And it's just, there's something you get out of being a teammate with someone that you can't get without playing sports. Like there's just another level of connection and trust and just being able to work well together. So for me, sports have just like meant so much to me and have done so much for my life. That's amazing. And it is, it is so important. And the fact that you recognize that and we're so upset to hear that other kids just don't have that access and that you're trying to make that access possible is great. And I, I think everybody is aware, but I don't know, there might be some younger people on this call today of the devastating earthquake that happened in Haiti um, in 2010. And you know, hundreds of thousands of people <clears throat> lost their lives, millions of people lost their livelihoods, and thousands of children were left homeless and orphaned and absolutely devastated. And I thought about this and I thought, wait a second, this was in 2010. Calvin had to have been like seven, eight years old. So, you know, I know what brought this around for you was that you met the founder of this school, Institute Edeline, sorry, which is a free school for these orphans uh, in Haiti. So you met the founder and, and she told you about what was happening and what, what these kids were experiencing. And then how did you make the leap from connecting to this mission to actually doing the work to form a nonprofit? Because it's not that easy to go ahead and actually create a 501 and there's a lot of work to that. So, um, how did you decide to do this? And then I would love for you to tell us, because I know you created an ambassador program at your school for other kids. So please let us know just a little bit about how you did it and how you involved other kids as well. So for me, I started my nonprofit Equip for Life in 2017. And primarily what we did was we would collect used sports equipment and fundraise to buy new sports equipment. And then we would donate it to uh, boys and girls around San Diego who can afford to play sports. So we'd give them soccer balls, footballs, basketballs, and they'd be able to take them home and play sports for as many hours as they wanted with all of their friends. So I've had that going for a while. And then when I learned about what happened in Haiti in the earthquake, I immediately got home 
And I started doing a ton of research on it. And I just learned about the horrific like accident that occurred. And it really just like, I couldn't not help out Institute out of line. And like, it really just, it struck a place in me. And I, I thought like, Stephanie Hoffman, the founder of um, Institute Adeline, really just did something incredible and changed the lives of not only the 200 kids that go to her school, but also the entire community by giving them food, a place of safety, and also jobs as like teachers, as cooks, as people who manage the land. And she really just made a humongous difference and seeing something like that happen and how much like how long uh the u.s dollar can go there and how many people can really impact it just i really wanted to do something for them and like knowing that they play on this dirt field that has like a few patches of grass and is littered with rocks i just thought that a field and a place like they could all come together would really be impactful for them and would make a humongous difference. And then on to the next part or next point you're asking about this ambassador program I started. So I started about a year ago, an ambassador program at my school and also at schools uh, neighboring us. And I got five heads of different departments. So we got a chief of technology, business development, um, social media, and then also operations. And all of these people run their own little uh, small parts of Equip for Life. And then under that, we have about 35 ambassadors that all have been doing fundraisers and raising money for uh, Project Field of Dreams. And it really is pretty incredible because it's brought us all together um, to, because we all really want to help these kids and it's sort of like a special bond and it really means a lot um, that all these people have been helping me out. And I, I think it's fantastic because you're inspiring, you're, you're helping kids in two ways. You're not just helping the kids in Haiti, which of course is a very urgent need, but you're helping other kids in California. You're helping kids to just understand that everyone can make a difference. Everyone. It does, you know, if you are a, you know, a renowned athlete, uh, like Brandy, or you're just a simple high school kid, we can all do our part to make a difference and help other people. And I think the fact that you are so young and you recognize that and you inspired other kids in your community is amazing. Um, Callie, if you could just go to the next slide, please. So, you know, this, I just wanted to put this slide up to talk about the Field of Dreams project itself. So um, I know that you're not only trying to build the field, but you're also trying to provide all of the equipment uh, and provide jobs as well. So if you could talk a little bit about the fact that your plan, your strategic plan, not only will give the kids their place to play, but you said you're also gonna make this something that can be open to the community and uh, provide employment opportunities. So can you just talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so obviously this field will be used by the 200 kids at Institute Adeline. However, um, we wanted to open it up to everyone in the community. We didn't want this to just be the place where um, these kids could come. We want everyone to be able to go and everyone to be able to play in a league setting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pay for at least 10 years of soccer balls, pennies, cones, goals. We're gonna set up bleachers so parents can come, parents and family can come and watch and I'll just connect there. Um, and also the other thing is, uh, this is gonna be a really safe place because Institute Adeline does have security 24 seven already, um, which is really important. And then it's just gonna be a place for all the kids to connect, not just the kids at the school. That's fantastic as well. Um, I know soccer in America is a place that kids don't just connect, parents connect. You know, they stand on the sidelines and they watch their kids and they form friendships and they build community. So, you know, I know many of these children unfortunately don't have parents, but you know, for kids kids that do, I mean, you don't know what sort of, um, you know, larger family environment could get created uh, from something like this. Uh, Callie, next slide, please. Oh, wait, uh, sorry, I have one more thing to go on there. 
So then the other thing is this whole building process will create jobs as well because we're going to need local Haitians to like lay the rocks and help build the field as well. We're going to be supporting three people's salaries for 10 years um, because we're going to need refs and coaches. So this is really going to be like supporting three families for 10 years, which when you think about it is pretty incredible. Yes, it is. Um, I mean, job creation and do good for a community and in a safe space. I, I love it. So the next slide is kind of showing your, your fundraising, your plan and um, how far you've already gotten. And because I think, you know, sports is competitive. So I always like to show, you know, how far we have to go to hit our goal. And um, you've done an incredible job. I know that your total fundraising goal is $100,000. Uh, I know you've done a lot of work on your own through very uh, small events like bake sales and, and just, you know, community things to get there. And you've got a very exciting pledge. So do you want to tell us a little bit about um, the company that's pledged to help you? Yeah, sure. So on our own so far, we've raised $23,000. And then we went to surf soccer, um, which is the largest youth soccer program in the entire world. And it's here in San Diego. And we talked to them and we're asking if they would want to help with us. And they were immediately super excited about it. Um, they said, this is like the perfect thing that we're looking for. It'll be amazing. Um, we'll help raise a ton of money for you. And then also in the years to come, what we can do is we can send some of our kids um, that attend surf soccer out to Haiti and run little camps and teach the kids how to play. So that would be such an amazing thing too, that there's going to be people and like just incredible soccer players going out and helping these kids learn, which will definitely get them more excited about soccer as well. So, so far on top of our 23,000, they have already raised 20,000. So we're at 43,000 total. There's another 30,000 pledged from them. So that brings us to 70, 73,000. And then what we need is 27,000. And obviously if we go over that 100,000, what we're gonna do is we're gonna buy more equipment for the kids, uh, like sustain the league for longer, uh, just with like a, an original down payment. And then as well, if we get a lot more than 100,000, we may help expand the garden as well which will help them feed more members of the community. Oh, that's beautiful. I, that's the first time I'm hearing that. I, I, really, I really love that. Um, and I also wanna point out, because I do think that this is a very important part of your organization, you're entirely volunteer driven. There are no salaries. You're not paying overhead. The money that comes in is really going out to these kids. You know, this is not a situation where for every dollar that comes in, 70 cents is spent on events. You know, you are really taking that dollar in and putting it where it's needed and nobody is getting paid and you are really doing this out of your heart as is everybody else in the organization, correct? Correct. And everything really is profit. Whenever we do fundraisers, say we're doing a bake sale, we have to buy supplies. All of that is out of our own money. It's not out of the Equip for Life Fund. So every single dollar that is donated goes straight to Haiti and helping out these kids. That is fantastic. Kelly, the last slide, please. Um, so I think that, that this uh, slide for everybody watching today kind of gives a summary of the ways that you really could use help because obviously money is a great way to help, but there is more than just money for ways for people to help. So in-kind donations, if anybody has access to equipment, uh, balls, pennies, shoes, uniforms, that's extraordinarily helpful to you as well, right? You have a way to collect and distribute equipment that's donated, right? Um, also introductions on field construction so that you can make sure that the pricing that you get is the most competitive, is the best uh, use of the resources uh, and cost as little as possible to get the goal done. Um, I know any relationships to soccer, to partnerships, um, to corporate partnerships, this is a really, uh, a really great cause. So if anybody out there um, maybe doesn't have the money to give, but happens to know somebody that they think might be interested in their business in supporting 
uh, Calvin will be able to put you in touch with him. Um, kids, parents of kids, get your kids to be ambassadors, <laughs> get them to learn how to do their own school fundraisers. Um, anybody can help and every dollar matters in a situation like this. So I just wanted to um, bring that up. And I think the last thing that would be very helpful to you are platforms like this, right? Other ways for you to get the word out, whether it's social media or being invited to other events to participate, but really any way for you to, to make Equipped for Life and this project known to the world, right? Did I, did I do a decent job in summarizing how we can best help? Yes, definitely. And I also wanna point out on the screen, we, we sort of broke down what, what each contribution can actually do. Because I think it's really fun sometimes to see, you know, hey, if I give $100, what, what does that mean? Um, so if, if you could take a minute to look at the screen, you can see, I mean, if we get to $5,000, that's a year of this program. Um, you know, $2,500, I think we've already achieved for you today from what I can see in the chat. Uh, and that's a set of bleachers so that those, those parents uh, and adults and, and other kids can come and watch games. So I just wanted everyone to see where the money goes, what the money can do, and how anybody can help with a connection, a social media post, spreading the word, you know, from a bake sale uh, to a big corporate sponsorship. It, it all goes a long way. So Calvin, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, uh, Kelly, you can, you know, um, reduce that. Thank you. And I'd like to uh, turn this over to our, oh, Brandy has a question. No, I, I just want to say again, I, I am so grateful to be here and I'm sorry that I have to leave, but I didn't want to just pop off. I want to say, Calvin, um, I really would love to support you and what you're doing. And um, please let's connect about equipment. And, and, and I'm glad that the surf is doing something because they, they, they have a great resource there. I was just down at the surf cup just two weeks ago. And so I'm glad that you've tapped into that group because they definitely need to make sure that they are doing their part to give back to, to other kids to play. So thank you for encouraging them. And I'm grateful that they said yes. And to everybody else, all the best. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you all again soon. Um, and thank you, Lisa. No, thank you. Brandon. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. Well, uh, and, and Calvin, make sure you actually check the chat because I see some posts from people that, um, that want to help and, and reach out. So be sure you check that and, and get in touch with everybody that's getting in touch with you. I'm going uh, through it right now. Excellent. And now I'd like to introduce Steve Schechter, who is the CEO of Tap In Mobile Solutions, as well as the CEO of Paula Sports. Uh, Steve is truly an amazing person. I met him recently and I was so just moved by who he is, what he can accomplish, how incredible his company is and the project that Tap In actually has already done in Haiti. So Steve, I'm gonna turn things over to you, but please like tell us about how much you have already done and what your plans are moving forward to continue to make sports accessible to kids around the world. That's great. Thanks, Lisa. You're so kind. Um, first off, before I before I share any of that, I want to first just um, thank you and thank Force Family Office and um, and Equip for Life uh, and the other panelists. Um, so much, Calvin, of, of what you shared uh, and so much of what Brandy shared really, really resonated with me. Um, you know, the, the, the comments about joy and hope um, really, really resonate with me. So um, I'm going to quickly just share a little bit on what the game has meant to me um, and then a little bit about uh, Tap and Impala and the things that we're doing in Haiti. So um, I, I would say that soccer has um, provided me with so many of my greatest relationships in my life, lifelong friendships. Um, soccer has created opportunities for me to travel. Um, it's enabled me to to, uh, to learn life skills, you know, that have led me to become an entrepreneur. Um, so I really feel like sports has shaped my life, um, perhaps even more so than my traditional educational uh, background. Sports has really influenced uh, my entire life. So um, to be able to uh, provide opportunities for kids to play sports um, is truly life-changing uh, and can be community-changing, right? So uh, enabling kids to play sports is creating future leaders, uh, community leaders, 
um, future entrepreneurs, uh, et cetera. So um, I think what you're doing is phenomenal. Um, you give me great hope, Calvin, as an older person uh, who's been doing this for quite some time to see a young person um, taking on this type of um, you know, football for development, social good work at such a young age really gives me hope. Uh, and so anyway, I just want to commend you and thank you. And I want to encourage everybody that's participating to support the work that Calvin uh, is doing. So, um, so uh, enough there, I, I guess I'll share a bit about Tappan and Paula and the work that we're doing in Haiti and how they might tie into the work that you're doing. Um, Tappan is a, uh, it's a social impact uh, football technology platform company, uh, which is a lot of words, but it, it essentially means that we have built a, a mobile-based platform that facilitates uh, running leagues on a very big scale. Uh, and it was designed specifically with developing nations in mind. Um, in fact, the genesis of the company was born out of Haiti. Uh, the, the other founder of the company is Haitian. Uh, Pedro Hervo, who, who grew up actually in a slum in Cape Haitian uh, and has come to the United States through football um, and played professionally and has become a dear friend of mine. Um, so a little backstory, I traveled for the first time to Haiti soon after the earthquake. Uh, Pedro and I were playing together in an old man soccer league over 40s and he, uh, he obviously was very impacted by the earthquake. He still had family there. Uh, as a dear friend of his, I had started learning about the history of the country, and he said, let's go, let's go. We, we, neither one of us can um, fix broken bones, neither one of us can rebuild buildings, but let's go and do what we can do, what we know, and that's, that's football. So, so uh, I said, all right, I'm in. Um, we went to Haiti, pretty much emptied our bank accounts, rented a field in, in Port-au-Prince, in Delma, and uh, we decided that we would just go and stay and run clinics for kids. And, and, and back to joy, you know, try to bring a little bit of joy to kids that were going through just horrific times, um, which you've touched on with the earthquake. So um, kids came from th around the city and just showed up at the field, word spread instantly. And, um, and I absolutely fell in love. I fell in love with the people of Haiti. I fell in love with the culture of Haiti. Um, I saw incredible undying spirit, uh, incredible warmth, uh, of, of people that despite going through terrible hardship, um, just opened their, their hearts um, and were, were so warm and friendly. I saw incredible talent. Uh, so I, I coach kids here at sort of the highest level, I guess they would say, you know, kids that go on to play at the highest levels collegiately and professionally. And, and I'm, I saw kids in Haiti that uh, many of them that had that kind of talent, uh, yet they were among the average kids. So incredible talent, incredible competitive drive, um, et cetera. Uh, but what I didn't see was any organized youth soccer, no, no leagues, um, really uh, just, just kids playing the game in many ways in a beautiful way, just playing sort of two against two on streets, et cetera, um, but not having opportunities to play organized soccer with teams and referees and fields and uniforms and the things that kids, you know, that, that we're involved with here have access to. And I found that very, very hard. Um, so uh, I, I would say that experience traveling to Haiti the first time changed my life. I, I came back and I decided, I told my wife, this is, this is what I want to dedicate the rest of my time to, um, creating opportunities for kids. Um, that don't have access to the game to be able to participate in the game. Um, and the ensuing years, the last 10 years, Pedro and I travel regularly to Haiti to do free clinics, coaching education, distribute equipment, et cetera. And uh, in 2017, I was invited to run a global foundation doing that kind of work. And that led me to travel to other developing nations, uh, mostly in Eastern Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, also in the West and Cameroon. Um, and I saw many of the same things, you know, it, lots of talent, passion for the game, incredible children, no organized infrastructure, no ability to um, express their self, themselves through the game, uh, no ability to be identified if they're talented for opportunities, whether they be educational or professional opportunities, et cetera. Um, and so an idea was born and that was Tap and Mobile Solutions. Um, so we came up with the idea of 
um, collaborating with football foundations and partnering and and uh, and launching national leagues in countries that don't have them. So um, that was 2019, and in two short years, we've developed a very unique technology platform, um, really that handles all of the aspects of running youth soccer, uh, all the way from ed coaching education and referee education and certifications through the platform, uh, registering kids, um, uh, ordering and fulfilling uniforms, creating schedules, booking fields, paying referees, all of the different aspects, uh, and also compiling data and information about players to help uh, the professional leagues and help the football federations and help the kids to sort of marry talent with opportunities. So. Um, so that's what Tappan is all about. That's the, the backstory of the, the company. Uh, it was absolutely born out, of, uh, um, born out of a desire to positively impact kids' lives. And, um, and uh, we love what we're doing. We're really excited about the direction that we're going. Um, but you know, as far as Haiti is concerned, we of course launched our first league in Haiti. It had to be the, our flagship. Uh, and the Haitian Youth National League launched um, uh, just about six, seven months ago, and it was an incredible experience. And and for Pedro, and for me, and and everyone in our organization, um, it was incredibly inspiring. And and to see, you know, thousands of kids participating in an organized league, um, all wearing very professional-looking uniforms, playing in front of, in some instances, thousands of spectators to watch youth games in stadiums. Um, First game nationally televised, uh, kids being interviewed on TV, and um, uh, and the, the joy seeing kids celebrate, you know, their successes and and um, everything. It's just been an incredible, incredible experience for us. And um, so, you know, Calvin doing work that is creating those kinds of experiences and opportunities and joy and hope, etc., is really, really meaningful. And and uh, um, by do, doing, you're you're not just um, you're not just enabling kids to play sports. You're you're changing people's lives. You really are. Um, and and the fact that it involves job creation and community, um, et cetera, is just it's awesome. It's really awesome. So. And honestly, the work that you're doing is really awesome because you know something I always say around social impact businesses is that they have that ability to not only offer a return on investment, which is obviously something that investors want. But so that's the ROI, but I always talk about the ROH. You know, there's also a return on happiness. And as an investor, if you can get both a return on your investment financially and a return on happiness, that is like the, the, the greatest uh, use of funds that, that I can think of. So, you know, yeah. I, I, love your, I love your product and your mission and, and, and what you've done. I, I appreciate that. And we, we do believe very strongly that, you know, positive social impact uh, and shareholder value do go hand in hand, um, that they're intrinsically connected. And, and actually creating a, a for-profit endeavor behind this um, really helps to build something that's very sustainable. Um, so we're, we're, uh, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, and, and the company is global in nature. We are launching uh, national youth leagues in six different countries at, you know, over the ensuing years. Uh, and we are bringing our product to the United States, which is exciting. So um, it's a it's a very exciting time for us. I, I do want to add, if I can, Lisa, and I, I, uh, this may be a bit of a surprise, but I, I want to just touch on Paula and something that Paula would like to do. Um, pa Paula is uh, an affiliated company. It's a soccer brand. Uh, it, its genesis came from a very similar place. Um, I asked Pedro when we started this, you know, the kids need to wear uniforms. Uh, they need to have numbers on their backs so that data and information about them can be aggregated and we can create opportunities for them. Um, but what are they gonna do about uniforms? And I said, let's leave it to the market. Um, it's not our business. We are technology entrepreneurs. And, uh, and Pedro said, if we do that, the, the wealthy 1% are gonna show up in $100 uniforms and the kids from Cite Soleil are gonna show up with mismatching t-shirts that they've painted numbers on the back. And as a social impact company, that should be unacceptable to us. You know, we need to empower kids so that they all feel important, so they all feel equal, so they all feel professional, et cetera. So Paula was born out of that. 
Um, and I'm thrilled to say that uh, Pala has made a strategic decision that it is going to move its manufacturing from China to Haiti. Um, and wow. um, it's, uh, it's a really, really exciting moment for the company. We're partnering with incredible folks uh, at an organization called One House who are really at the leading edge of um, fabric technology and supply and, um, and design, et cetera, to build um, the world's first micro studio in Haiti, uh, producing locally, hiring Haitians, um, enabling us to scale the league more quickly, uh, et cetera. So that's very exciting news. Uh, I also want to share that Paula has uh, decided they would like to provide 100 new balls to um, this initiative uh, and also provide additional equipment to this initiative in the form of cones and pennies, et cetera. Um, and uh, I, I'd encourage others to, to, to join in, in that endeavor. Um, so I just wanted to share that with the group. Wow. Thank you so that much. Yeah, I, I, I told you from the moment I met you, it was just an instant, like this is just a human that I want in my life and in my world. Um, that is so beautiful. I, thank you so much for the donation. That's that's huge. That's going to go such a long way. I think that's phenomenal. And to know that you're moving from China to Haiti, um, that is actually, a, 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 it's just phenomenal on so many levels. So thank you for the work you do. Thank you for the donation that you're making here today. And thank you for the difference you're making in kids' lives everywhere. Um, you're you're really a special person and I, I'm going to be following the progress of, of Tappan and Paula and uh, you have a, a fan for life in, in Lisa Morris. Um, Thank you so much, Lisa. I mean, you're really somebody that's, that's building a better world. Um, and so please also drop your information into the chat so that people can get in touch with you if they want to know more about Tappan, about Paula, about you. Just put your information in the chat so people can get in touch. Um, and thank you for, for building a better world. And um, talking about building a better world uh, leads me to our final panelist today, um, who I would say is an expert in building better communities and using sports to do that. So I'd like to introduce everyone to Roy Kessel, who's the founder of the Sports Philanthropy Network. Um, Roy, take it away. Uh, thanks for having me here today, Lisa. Um, it's tough acts to follow with uh, with Brandy, Calvin, and Steve and the, the amazing work that they're doing. One of the things that I love in this role is every single day I get to meet new people doing incredible work around the globe to create stronger, healthier, and more inclusive communities through sports. And so, Calvin, I definitely want to congratulate you. I know it's hard to get those types of initiatives off the ground. And, and when you look around the country at uh, how much youth sports equipment is just lying around in people's garages, uh, you know, something that we've talked about mobilizing that effort and uh, I love what you're doing. So we definitely will talk offline on, on what else we can do to support uh, the work that you're doing. Um, I know as, as Steve said, the social entrepreneur space is crucial. There There's so many ways and so many organizations, but finding a way to create a, a sustainable model that funds the work that's going on and continue to drive that impact so that the time that's spent can really be focused on improving the communities instead of running out to do fundraising events individually. So uh, congratulations on all that. And obviously Brandy's done uh, amazing work throughout her career. So as the Sports Philanthropy Network, um, we talk about uh, working with uh, three types of organizations. So it's, it's sports organizations, which consists of teams, leagues, governing bodies, associations, uh, athletes and, and their foundations, and then community sports nonprofits. And, and one of the things we've seen historically is there has been too little collaboration amongst those groups and, and too much duplication of resources uh, across uh, in, in each of those channels. People are creating the same type of program in, in 10 or 20 places around the, the U.S. instead of working together and, and creating a really strong uh, sustainable model. And so our, our mission has really been to do three things. So we talk about ACE uh, and helping ACE our mission and that's amplify, connect and educate. So we, we amplify the work that the organizations are doing by uh, providing media coverage. We get credentials from organizations like the NFL, the PGA, 
tour uh, the Big Ten to cover the community work going on around their major events like the Super Bowl, the NFL draft, things of that nature. Uh, we have three podcasts a week where we spotlight organizations that are doing fantastic work in their community, two that I host focused on the organizations and one hosted by Caleb Bradham, our VP of Community Development that's called Legacy After the Locker Room that highlights the work athletes are doing in their communities after their playing days are over. Um, and then really we spend a lot of time connecting organizations to the people, resources and technology that they need to be successful. So things like Steve's building out um, is fantastic. There's so many organizations that don't have the resources and, and understanding of the technology side and how they can leverage that technology to make even a greater impact. And probably the bulk of our time is spent in education, uh, really in the nature of professional education, workshops, trainings, webinars, seminars. And then our signature event is coming up on June 28th and 29th, and that's called Sports Philanthropy World. Um, it will be virtual this year. Um, it's an international conference. Last year, we had 30 countries represented, um, over 430 people uh, attending from 327 organizations. And we had some great celebrity participation from former NFL commissioner, Paul Tagliabu, uh, Lee Steinberg, one of the top NFL agents, uh, Warwick Dunn, who builds homes for single mothers, uh, Troy Vincent, who runs the, uh, a lot of the social justice initiatives for the NFL and, and a lot more. So um, one of the things, Kevin, that we would like to do this year is we would like to bring you into the conference and, and have you put you on one of our panels so that we can help spotlight the work that you're doing. So uh, there's a few different options. So I'll be in touch and we'll, we'll see which one fits best for your schedule. That's incredible. Thank you so much. Um, it's a great community of people and we, we love supporting uh, that next generation of leaders. And it's really one of the, the focuses is looking at how do we continue to grow and, and build and, and professionalize this space to make a greater impact because being an athlete is not uh, the giving back from an athlete side should not be just about signing autographs, taking pictures, playing in golf outings or showing up at fundraising dinners, right? Those are all celebrity functions. But these professional athletes have so much energy, so much caring, so much desire to give back, but they haven't been trained or supported on how they can make that impact. And so one of the things we really like to do is help them learn what opportunities are out there, help them find causes that really match with what they're trying to do or what they're interested in doing. And then connect them there so they can spend their time on the aspects that they like um, for, for many of them. And, and just like for many of us, we may not like running the organization. That might not be the part, the, the back office type of functions. They're very good at being out and speaking to people, helping to raise money, bringing uh, awareness to the cause, but they need to understand the cause and get more involved than they can by just uh, attending a golf founding. So there's, there's so much passion and energy there and um, you know, welcome connecting with people who are interested to learn more. And uh, we look forward to participating. Lisa, thank you for including us in this. I know we wanna leave some time for questions for, for Calvin and for Steve, and uh, yeah, we appreciate thank, being here. Roy, thank you so much for, for the work that you do. Please put the information on your conference into the chat and how to get in touch with you as well. Uh, you're, you know, you're so respected in the space. The work you've done has just been absolutely incredible. And the fact that you're giving Equip for Life and Calvin a, a platform and a chance. I mean, when I look at what we stated as the goals earlier of this event, you know, to help raise funds, to help get equipment, to help get a, a social platform, it's like we're hitting all of them in an hour. Uh, so imagine the work that can be done and amplified at a conference like yours that's entirely dedicated to sports and philanthropy and building better communities. So thank you for really, um, you know, making this so special and, uh, and for your really generous offer uh, for Equip for Life. So thank you for your time today. Um, Callie, if you can put the, the final uh, screen of Calvin's presentation back up uh, just as a, a reminder for everybody. Um, 
of what's needed. So we do want to spend the last few minutes uh, again, you know, answering questions that, that you might have. Um, I might need to scroll through uh, a little bit. I do see some in the in the Q and A. Um, and um, oh, well, this is actually a, a comment uh, from from Ika saying, as a person who played soccer my entire childhood in a developing country. This initiative is so important and much needed for Haiti. Oh, thank you, Aika. Um, and Christopher, uh, you've asked, is Project Italine uh, Club a 501c3 as well? Uh, I know Equipped for Life is, and Equipped for Life is then funding this project. So it's definitely a tax deductible organization. But Cal, is um, Project Italine itself a nonprofit as well? So Project Adeline and Institute Adeline is not technically a 501c3. However, it is backed by Youth Without Borders. So when you donate, uh, you donate through that so you can get a tax deductible. So pretty much if you went to Project Adeline and you donated to them, it would act as a 501c3. Got it, for their fiscal sponsorship. Okay, yeah. um, well, thanks for, for those questions. Uh, not sure if I see questions in the chat itself, but I have some fun questions, which is essentially some trivia. And um, Force Family Office is going to make a donation in the name of whoever gets it right first in the chat. Um, so here is the first question for everyone paying attention. The first fastest fingered person gets the uh, donation in their name. So here's the question. For the men's national teams, which national team for men has won the most World Cups? Do, 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 do. We have it, Josh Smilowitz. Hey, Josh. Um, so donation will be made in your name, Josh. Um, I, think, uh, I think that's fantastic. Okay, the next trivia question. Which American female player has won a golden ball? Hmm. No. Sue Bird's wife. No. Oh, oh, oh. I think we have a winner. Carly Lloyd is the correct answer. Roy goes to you. You are the, the winner of this one. So donation will be made by force in your name. And last but not least, how many golden balls did Lionel Messi win? Hmm. I was told less than the uh, ones that, that, there we go. Hold on, Jean-Marc O'Brien. The answer is two, unless I am incorrect. I had to look that up because I actually don't know my sports trivia, but I believe the correct answer is two. So if I'm wrong, apologies, but hey, it's all for charity anyway. Um, and there you go. So um, that is a, is a great thing. And I'd also like to announce that FORCE is also donating $10 for every person that attended this webinar today. So um, I think we will have ended this session having raised a very good amount of money, hopefully inspired some of you to feel that return on happiness um, that I talked about before. And please, you know, feel free to get in touch with any of our, our panelists. You can reach out to us at FORCE if you didn't happen to catch their information in the chat and we can connect you with them. And on behalf of, of FORCE Family Office, I just wanna thank all of our panelists today. And I wanna thank everybody that took the time on a Friday to come and hear about this. And I really, really hope that everybody here leaves today knowing that just showing up made a big difference and we can all do our part no matter what our resources are. Everybody matters, everybody has something to give. And um, I just wanna wish you all a wonderful day. So thanks so much for joining us today. And we will keep you posted on our next Force for Good webinar with another wonderful nonprofit being featured. So uh, I'll turn it back to Callie for final uh, goodbyes or she just popped no. off. I wasn't sure. All right, so just final goodbye. Yes, thank you everyone for joining. So long. Thank you farewell. so much for everyone.
uh, for coming. Day. And thank you so much to Force Wealth, Steve, Roy, Brandy. It really means a ton. Thank you. All right. Adios, amigos. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.